and welcome back to Literally Literary. If this is your first time joining us, be sure to check out our previous episodes. This is a special bonus episode with messages and thoughts from EPCC English students about The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Hi, my name is uh, Ruben Perez, a student from El Paso Media College. I am Professor Gomez's student. I just wanted to reach out to you guys about Poet X. Uh, Poet X kind of relates to my life because as I was growing up, I didn't really grow up with a dad. Um, and it was very difficult for me. And just like Ziomara would keep her emotions to herself rather than telling her mom uh, is the way I reacted with my mom as well. My mom was a rock to our family and she raised me and my brothers. Um, and it was difficult for her and for us. And I also wrote about my emotions and I had a journal. I didn't write poems, but I did write about everything else. After reading The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, during the semester, hearing her today, reading some of the pages from her novel book was very beautiful. I've never had any connection with an author or such before, but today in the life, it was very different. She could teach you hundreds of things in only one phrase, she says. She has such a vibe, and I really enjoyed her life today. She expresses herself, of course, as a Dominican so much in the book because herself she is Dominican. And in the life, she says that she knows not every person, not every Dominican person will enjoy the book. Not only because they don't like to read, but because of the words or because they could say, my mom is not as strict as you are describing in her book but also she says that she's pretty happy with the result of the poet x because it's the book that she could finish um she had some of the other books that she wrote but she couldn't finish them and not only because of the book but you will realize that things actually can have an end if you put an effort for it you can actually finish whatever you please whatever you are doing and that is something that i really enjoyed from her words from my perspective elizabeth not only wants to make you read the book and that's it but making you feel what she feels when she's writing she wants to transmit it which is amazing um she got a lot of people's heart on her life and um, she is amazing and her voice is amazing as well and one thing that she said that will stay in my mind and I think it's the most important thing that will stay in my mind is when she said that not everybody has to know what you are feeling when you don't even know yourself what you are feeling um she does keep her herself a lot of her things that she has wrote and she said it during the live um and she when she's actually better from the thing that she wrote she keep it there but she doesn't publish it because she don't she doesn't want to make money from from the from her feelings basically And it's okay because it doesn't matter if she is an adder. And most of the people think that they must publish everything they feel. But she deserves the privacy. And that is something not every single person keeps in mind. And yeah. In Elizabeth Acevedo's Poet X, she first started in 2012 
she originally had only 40 pages and she left it off like that for a while one day she went to this group of poem writing and the host told them to pick out a little paper from a hat that he was passing around and the topic was phobias Acevedo got a, a topic of the fear of religion and she wrote poems on stories of a, a, a woman, a girl and her religious mother. And she didn't get the idea until she went back home and she thought about the poems that she wrote. And that's where she got the idea of Yomara and her religious mother. And the, in the first prompts, the mother was not included in the story. So this was something new and fresh and entertaining for her. So hi, Mr. Gomez. Um... So I was checking on live on Instagram about the um, Acevedo event. So actually, it's based that she was talking about how she wrote the story. The best part is that one of the stories that I really like about the Poet X was that Jacob versus Kendrick Lamar. I talked to you last time about it. Yeah. Actually, when she, I mean, yeah, when she was talking about her religion, she was into God and she kind of learned a lot of languages, you know, foreign languages. And she was proud of herself learning a lot of foreign languages, a lot of church stuff that she learned. So it was kind of great when I saw her live on Instagram. So yeah, it was great at that point. Híjole, just one minute. I'll try to be quick. Um, there's a poem on page 48 titled How I Feel About Attention where Ms. Acevedo um, makes a kind of relation between her or she thought of her as being uh, Medusa's daughter, one of the most famous characters of the Greek mythology and on um, this poem th there's a couple of strong lines that I would love to to try to dissect and the first one is the following a story distorted waiting for others to stop and stare I love how how Ms. Uh, Acevedo relates um, what she was uh, what she was living, well, actually, the, the character, Xiomara, uh, was living back, back then, talking about um, catching the attention of, of men, and that story of Medusa, who was, uh, who was the, uh, the only mortal organ out of three. She was beautiful, she was a uh, very good priestess, uh, she met about the goddess Athena, and she would swear her life to liberty and services. Um, she actually didn't mean any wrongdoing, but the mortals started visiting the Parthenon because of her. And, uh, and one day, uh, the powerful and almighty Poseidon laid eyes on Medusa. So, um, Zayden was a man that uh, he really felt an urgency to possess Medusa. Um, he followed her and raped her in front of Athena's statue. And actually, Athena did not, she didn't punish Poseidon, claiming it was a common masculine entity's nature dropping the guilt on Medusa and cursing her right after. Actually, she did nothing. She, she didn't mean no wrong. She was just uh, a beautiful girl, just like uh, Xiomara. Now that we know how Medusa became that infamous character, we, we kind of um, understand a little bit more uh, why it's Acevedo um, wrote a story distorted, waiting for others to stop and stare. Uh, Medusa, she was only uh, 
astonishing, beautiful woman who just who didn't. Her only crime was to to be beautiful and to, just to uh, catch the attention of of men, of mortals, of gods, and so Xiomara was. Uh, I was experiencing uh, the same the same kind of attention, uh, not a good one, one who who men can kill for. Keeping track of page forty eight, um, on the second strong line where Ms. Acevedo wrote, "At how her blood is always becoming some fake hero's mission, something to be played, conquered." Um, I truly believe this relates to, to Perseus' venture to claim her head um, just as a gift for a twisted king. Um, I believe that, that uh, this explains how a woman is being objectified and uh, how Theomara was feeling back back at that time when when she was catching the attention not in a good way but a, a very mistaken way from men so i was reading the the book of poetics part three um actually you know the verses on the page 306 through 307 i was um reading about it I think, by my um, opinion, I think she was either singing and then praying. So once I was still reading the poetics, um, what else I learned is some someone returning that supposedly she didn't reply a text. Like somebody didn't reply a text uh, two months ago. Um, either it was someone familiar for her or some friend of hers. Thanks for joining us on this bonus episode. Literally Literary is brought to you by the Mellon Foundation through the Humanities Collaborative at EPCC and UTEP. Follow us on Instagram at literallyliterary.ep and on Twitter at literallylitep.com.